Hello, my name is Salik Sally. This is a comprehensive tutorial on using Microsoft Excel 2016. I have designed this tutorial to serve as a learning tool for anyone who wishes to learn Excel, even those who have dreaded it for years. We will start with the absolute basics and then proceed with the most commonly used features in today's business environment. The goal is to empower you with the familiarity and knowledge so that you can add Excel as a technology tool to your technology toolkit to advance your studies, careers, and resume. So please stick with me while we take this journey together. The concepts that you learned here apply also to the previous versions of Excel, such as Excel 2013, 2010, and 2007. So spend a few minutes here and there in this tutorial and you will end up saving hours in the future. Let's get started. First, the very basic concepts. And before we move any further here in Microsoft, in our study of Microsoft Excel, one of the new features in Excel 2016 is the Tell Me feature. And this is available in Word and other applications of Microsoft Office as well. So if you don't know how to do something, you could click here on this little bar here and click on search for something. So let's say I want to adjust the margins or I want to add a footer. So you just search for it. You don't have to know where it is located within Excel and then you click on header and footer and it will change it for you. Or charts and so on. So basically this is a tell me feature. Tell me what you want to do and I'll just get you there in doing it. And it will take you to what you want it to search for. So it's a good feature to uh, get to know in Excel 2016. It is not available in previous versions of Excel. So as I mentioned, first things first, the first time you open Excel, this is what you'll be presented. Here on the left hand side, you'll have a listing of recent documents that you might have opened. And then also here in the bottom left, you can open other files, Excel files or workbooks that you might have worked in the past. On the right hand side is a listing of various templates that you could utilize for using Excel. So in this case, instead of you having to, uh, let's say, uh, do an inventory list or let's say that you wanted to do a um, family budget, instead of you starting from scratch, you could pick one of those templates and uh, double click on it and uh, it will be downloaded and then you, all you have to do is plug in the numbers here. So let's go back here. Additionally, you can search by various categories and also search for online templates and download and utilize them the same way. Now, uh, as we are starting here, I wanted to also explain how do you get started with the first workbook and what are the different components in the application so that you can easily and effectively navigate in the application as you start using it. So. Uh, once you open Excel for the first time, if you're starting from scratch, you simply click here on a blank workbook. At this point, let's navigate a little bit and understand how the application works before we move to anything else. So on the very top here, you have the file menu and the various different tabs, home, insert, page layout, formulas, and so on. Those are very similar to other Microsoft applications such as Word and uh, PowerPoint and so on. The idea is the same. So you have here the Home tab, which has all of these different sets of icons and functions as to what they do. Those are also arranged together in various groups. So for example, anything related to the fonts, uh, it's under the Fonts section or grouping. Anything under the alignment that you need to align the text and so on uh, for the different cells, it's under the alignment group. And then for anything related to numbers, it's under uh, the numbering group and then Anything related to the styles is under the styles group and so on. And that continues from tab to tab the same idea. It is also important to understand here that those tabs are organized just like in Word in a very particular order, uh, mostly depending on what you're doing and how you're working in an Excel spreadsheet. So for example, you might be tinkering with uh, initial design and calculations. Those calculations and designs and stuff are 
in the home tab starting with the font alignment number styles and then some basic calculations here you can insert other stuff such as formulas and other components you can uh, change here on the next tab the layout of your spreadsheet and we'll go through some of this stuff together then you can work with various formulas and uh, manipulate data and review the document here and then view it and change the viewing and your worksheet now here in the bottom you can also you have this scrolling bar here typically you might have one or more worksheets here in the bottom now let me explain this to a couple terms in excel first excel is uh, designed for you to do calculations just like budgets or projections and anything that has that you want the computer to calculate cells or values via a formula you probably have heard the term spreadsheet spreadsheet is just a file that contains those calculations and it's typically utilizing excel or some kind of spreadsheet software in excel those files could be referred as workbooks so sometimes you might hear the term workbook so the workbook and worksheet are used interchangeably now the other thing that to remember here is that um, particularly in a workbook you have what's called the worksheets the worksheets are those think of it just like the pages on a book so you have for example sheet one here you could add another worksheet here now you have sheet two sheet three and so on so now as you enter calculations and we'll get to those in a moment in your specific worksheet you can link those calculations with other values in other worksheets as well so now those worksheets they make up the workbook now in each worksheet you also have and again please stick uh, with me at this point these are very basic but you have to understand the basics in order to do the next steps in this tutorial here so in a particular workbook or even a worksheet here you have these columns a b and so on then you also have the rows so you have the columns uh, by the letters here and the rows are represented by a number then you also have those cells for example this is referred to as b3 that would be the reference for this cell and so on so that uh, the cell that we also have clicked on at this point it's referred to as the active cell now in each one of those cells you can insert text like we inserted up here you can insert numbers and format those numbers either as general numbers or as currency or percentage you can format that cell to be a percentage or you can format it uh, to uh, be plain text as I mentioned earlier the other thing that is important to understand in Excel is that uh, you also have formulas and that's what performs those calculations so for example the formulas in Excel this is very important to remember that all the formulas start with the equal sign let's do a very basic calculation at this point so let's say on B2 we have uh, 35 and then on B3 we have 56 and now on here on B4 we want to get the total of these two values so one of the easiest way would be to do here and I'm just jumping ahead a little bit here we want to put in there a formula so now that formula it starts again remember it, it starts with the equal sign and then in this case I'm going to put the function here sum and we'll get to explain that further and then we are going to add here b2 all the way through b3 in this case the all the way through it's represented by the colon and then we hit enter so I simply selected that range b2 through b3 and then we hit enter and now that notice it's 91 if any of these numbers change then that total will be updated automatically so that's the basic idea of spreadsheets so we have the, the workbooks and then the worksheets now those worksheets here in the bottom you'll be able to navigate from left to right once you have more that uh, don't once they don't fit in here you'll navigate to the right and you also have this scrolling bar here to navigate within the same worksheet if you wanted to rename those worksheets you can simply right click on them 
and then choose to rename it, give it a different name. For example, this would be January and so on. One other tip before we uh, proceed any further here, it's also important to remember that um, the best way to learn the application in Excel besides going through this tutorial is to basically click on the different functions and see what's available and what each one of those icons does and then try it. Uh, select stuff in here and tinker with it because it's not going to break. You're just going to know then as to where things are located. So stick with me at this point and now we'll continue into more of the detailed application features and learn how to do some of the calculations. So we'll start with some of the additional basic concepts in doing some of the calculations in here. I'm going to utilize here a worksheet that I'll also post for you online to access and follow the videos. So uh, keep in mind that you can control those worksheets by these buttons here from one to the other to move from one page to the other. You can also click here in the bottom of the worksheets to move from one to the other or by clicking on the next page button on the orange area here. session I'm going to go over some of the basic features of Microsoft Excel such as adding formulas in a cell to calculate values, formatting part of the worksheet, and using various formulas such as sum, maximum, minimum, average, and count. So let's assume we have this data here in Excel. I simply type this, there's nothing magical about it, you just type those values and then those values, the first thing that we are going to learn here is how to format these values here, these numbers, into currency. So all that you have to do is you select the cells that you want to format a certain way with a certain type of formatting, and then we can either click here under dollars or on the drop down a different currency, or we can click on the drop down here and choose currency. And notice the dollar amounts have been entered. Now, at this point, we are going to learn how to add a formula in this cell to get the totals for training for all the months. So one of the concepts that is important to understand is that all formulas in Excel start with an equal sign. So you have the equal sign, and then you have the function. The function could be sum, or it could be something else. And there are hundreds of functions in Excel. We'll get to those later. Then the third part of it is the range that you want to calculate or what you want to calculate. Now the range, it's typically expressed by the cell address for it or the reference to it, the cell reference to it. So for example, if I wanted to calculate these numbers from here to here, that would be E6 through E14. So if I could put in here E6 colon E14. And notice it's highlighted in blue and also it's displayed here in the formula bar. And then we hit enter here in a moment. So again, you have the equal sign, the function, whatever the function is, and then the range and the, the area within the range is represented by a colon. And then you hit enter and that is going to be calculated. So you can have those calculations anywhere in any cell as long as it contains a specific formula. So in this case here, the easiest would be for us to insert this formula. And I'll show you the first one by doing this manually. We do the equal sign, then this would be C6. So we need the function first, then C6 colon, that represents anything from here to here through E6 and then hit enter. So that's one way to do the calculation here. The other way to do the calculation is by using uh, this under editing here. You have the this drop down here for sum, average, count numbers, max, minimum, and more functions as well. So let's say we want the sum here. So the sum, we clicked on sum here, and notice it selected this section automatically. If you're going to use this feature, however, make sure that it's calculating the right range of cells. If that is correct, you just hit enter, and now it did it for you automatically. 
Another method to, to enter the formula here is by hitting the equal sign, then the function, and then you can simply select the range that you want to calculate, or you could click on the actual cell references, and that way you then have to line them up manually. Then you hit enter, and there it is, the calculation. We could do the same thing down here as well. And by the way, I have these comments here as to how to calculate it. So if you're following uh, this tutorial, you can also download the worksheet and follow it on your own. Now down here, we want to calculate all the expenses for January. So we click here on the equal sign, sum, like we learned earlier, open parentheses, select the whole range, hit enter, and it's done. Now, we need to calculate it for the other months as well. So is there a shorter way of doing it? And the answer to that is yes. You can use what's called the autofill feature. The autofill feature, instead of you having to go through each one of those cells, what you can do is you can copy and replicate that same formula. So this is our formula. We can replicate it to all the cells following downward or all the cells going from left to right. So how do you do that? All you have to do is you just click on the cell reference here and then hold the mouse on the bottom right here when it changes to a little plus sign and then just drag it down. And notice it has performed the calculation. One thing to keep in mind here is that double check whether those references are correct. For example, here for 88, is it calculating the right stuff here? This also works from left to right. And notice this is our formula and we can drag it to the right by when it changes on the bottom right to a little plus sign, drag it to the right and it's going to give us the totals. Notice what it's doing. It's taking from C6 through C14. Then you go to the next one, D6 through D14, E6 through E14 and so on. So it's going it's seeing incrementally from one point to the other to the other. And this works the same way for anything in sequence. So for example, you have um, Monday. You drag this down, it fills the days of the week. Anything like uh, January. And it proceeds the same way. Um, the other thing that you could use this for is for numbers, for example, now for numbers, you either have to hold down the control key to do it automatically, or you can click right here in the bottom and choose to fill the series. It's going to just keep on moving them. And there it is. So control button or fill a series for numbers. You can also do things that are in a certain sequence of other sorts. For example, let's say so let's say you want to have um, anything in a certain sequence, 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on. So you, you select your pattern that you have, and then you drag it down. And notice it's building this automatically for you. So that's how you use the autofill feature. Now the next thing, another function here is the maximum. The maximum is determining, based on these values, we want to determine which one was the highest number in this column. So you can do this with a formula. In Excel, you can click on uh, formulas here and uh, you can see all these different groups of formulas or functions, actually the functions, and then you can see here under all, these are all the different functions. Now what we could do here is we could just choose, we want to find the maximum. So if we start typing max here, or you could have typed maximum, notice it comes up with a bunch of suggestions. So notice here, max, it returns the largest value in a series or in a set of values. So you have a set of them here and it's going to give you the highest one. Now to learn how to do it, you can also click on help on this function and it will go on the web and it will give you examples, descriptions, examples, and all kinds of other information about any of those, how to do it and so on. So keep that in mind that that's how you learn about other formulas. We'll not be able to go through every single one of them. Now here we want to insert to find the highest number. So we do the equal sign, max, you can double click on it, and then you select the range that you want to find the highest number. So you select the range here. We don't want the total, of course. Hit enter, and the highest number is 500. If I change this to 
that notice these all these calculations will be updated automatically now if I wanted to get the highest number for the other columns as well I could use the auto fill feature that we covered earlier just simply drag this to the right and then we are all set the next one is we want to find the lowest number so we are finding the minimum we do the equal sign min open parentheses and then select the range for your calculation hit enter and now there is the minimum use the auto fill feature and we are set then we want to find the average the average you could either do equal sign average or don't forget as well we have this stuff up here under the home tab notice there is also this drop down here under to find the average now notice it's trying to pick the wrong uh, sequence of numbers here so we want to select here the right range and then hit enter and that's why I like it to do this manually use the autofill and there it is now you can also count how many values are in here in this range so we can do equal sign count and then open parentheses and then hit enter so there are nine rows in here and then in this one there are only eight notice one of them is blank okay so so far we learned how to add some of those tools how to format these numbers into uh, currency and also we learned how to find the total the sum for a bunch of numbers we learned maximum minimum average and count here is another example that you could explore for yourself tinker with those on your own as well In this session, we are going to learn how to use some of the basic formatting features here in Excel. Typically, even if you did the best calculations and so in uh, your spreadsheets, it's uh, necessary also to utilize some of the functions and features to save you time and also to make it more presentable for... So let's assume we have this worksheet here and we want to make it more presentable to merge a bunch of cells together. So you select a whole bunch of cells here that uh, we may have in this section. And what you do is you go here under Merge and Center. Now in your computer, it might be the icon might be larger because of the sake of recording. I have this smaller. So I click here on Merge and Center, and it's taking whatever was in those cells, merging all those cells together and centering the content of that text. At this point, I could make this font larger and smaller, different colors and all that type of stuff. However, I could format this cell by using one of the cell styles. So this saves you time, of course. You can pick one of those styles from here and notice the live preview that takes place as well. So I'm going to choose heading one. Now, the next thing that you could do is you could select this data and format it by using one of the styles. So pick one of those styles from here and then click OK. And notice it has been formatted with some other lines and such in there. If you don't like that one, you can simply go to the styles and pick something else. So for example, this is slightly better here, of course. The other thing that you can do is, and let's learn at this point about another concept that um, you can pick the data within a range here and you can format this data under the home tab here you can utilize conditional formatting so conditional formatting it easily spots trends and patterns in your data using bars colors and icons for visual importance or to highlight the important connections or values so there are various things here you can highlight anything greater than a certain range you get anything less than equal to and so on you could do the top 10 rules top 10 10 percent bottom 10 percent and all that type of thing you could also use data bars data bars notice here's a live preview based on the values within each cell it will highlight it with a specific color so it stands out and also you could use different scales here so for example you want to see the different yellow red blue and so on and also make it even fancier with different icon sets uh, one other thing i wanted to mention here is that you can create your own rules just click on create new rule here and then choose your criteria yet that you want to apply 
And for the sake of time, I'm not going to invest into that at this point. That was some of the stuff regarding the formatting. So stay tuned here. We are going to move to some additional basic calculations in our worksheet. In this next session, I'm going to go over some of the other basic calculations, and these would be the arithmetic calculations, such as adding and subtracting and so on, because these are the key components in any office duties that you'll particularly be doing with Excel. And these are fundamental concepts. So if you're following the tutorial here uh, from the previous sections as well, at this point you could click here under basic calculations in the bottom, or you can click on next page here on the right hand side. So now at this point we are in uh, understanding some of the arithmetic basic calculations. So we are going to learn about uh, uh, getting a bunch of the deductions. So let's assume that we have a bunch of employees here and this is their monthly pay. And then we are getting some deductions that they have to give up here, deduction one and deduction two. Then we are going to calculate how many, how much they are giving up. Then we are going to calculate their net pay, then the annual pay, and then also the weekly pay that they are supposed to take. So the purpose here is to actually under for us to understand how subtraction works, how multiplication works, and division and so on. Again, like I mentioned earlier, these are fundamental concepts you will be utilizing no matter what work environment you are going to be. In this case, we want to first probably calculate the deductions, the total for the deductions. As we learned earlier, equal sign, sum, and then the range here. Hit enter, and that is calculated. Now notice here, in uh, this is Office 2016, and this it filled out the other values automatically. Now in this case, that's a new feature of Excel 2016. If I didn't want that feature, and for now I'm going to undo it, this is where you control that option. So you'd also, if that is not going to be taking place automatically, you can drag this down like in the previous versions of Excel. And now we have the calculations here for those deductions. The next uh, concept that we want to learn here is we want to get the net pay. So the gross pay minus the deductions would give us the net pay here for these employees. So in this case, what we need to do and what you could do as well is by doing this manually. So remember that function here. So we do uh, B6 minus deductions, which is E6. Notice in this case, we do not need to utilize the function because this is a very basic arithmetic calculation that we are performing. Then we hit enter and it gives us the total here for the total net pay for Hubert. Now notice this is a new feature in Excel 2016. It tries to figure out as to what you are about to do and it does it for you. This is the autocorrect options, but we can choose to undo the calculated column and it'll go back to like the older previous versions of Excel. Now, in this case, if you chose to use it this way, you can use the autofill feature, which it did for us, and then go and get the totals for the other employees as well, the net pay for the other employees. So that is using the subtraction function in a formula in Excel. Uh, let's calculate here the net income annually. So annually here, we are talking for the 12 months for this employee. Now, in this case, of course, we can take the monthly pay times 12. So we're using the multiplication function or concept here. So to re represent that in Excel, what we do is we put the equal sign, then we take this value here the net pay, we can again either click on it or type the reference, times 12. Now, by the way, for those of you that are wondering why is it putting these net pay and all this uh, other stuff in here, it's because our table here has been formatted with this special formatting and it's using the label from here. However, we could use in there the F six, I guess that's the reference for it, F6 times 12 as well. So either one of them will work. So F6 times 12. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that 
I usually don't recommend that you use static values in here within part of a formula. We are using them at this point because for simplicity, you might want to put, for example, another reference here to say months and then have 12 or six or whatever. And you change this by referencing this value. So by basically, instead of saying times 12, I could use I 13 and then hit enter and that will give you the flexibility then to say okay what about for six months now it's 20,000 well for 12 months that is 41,000 and so on now if I drag this down you'll notice that there is a problem here it's not giving us the calculation the proper calculation and the reason for that is because it's shifting here so notice it's saying I 14 I-15, I-16, and so on, and it's giving us a blank value. The reason for that is because this is shifting down on this side, and we'll cover that in the next uh, session here as to the types of references. To correct that feature, you would use here what's called an absolute reference by putting the dollar sign in front of uh, the column and the row, and then hit enter, and then once we apply that, that calculation will be correct. But we'll get to that. Stay tuned for the types of references tutorial to understand why we did that and how we did that. So that's multiplication. Again, the equal sign, the reference times the value or another reference. Now here, we want to learn about the weekly pay. We know that there are 52 weeks typically in a year. Now, what's the weekly pay for Hubert here? So to calculate that, we could do equal sign and then take G6, divided by, and division is represented by a slash, 52. Or you could have a reference here like we did earlier. And then this is the weekly pay, 805. And this is a feature, like I mentioned earlier, of Office 2016 in order of filling that automatically for you. So that's it as far as understanding the basic uh, functions in Excel, arithmetic functions, adding, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying. It's, again, it's a very powerful feature and one of the fundamental concepts that you'll need in order to successfully use Excel in business or career or whatever you're doing. In this next session, I'm going to go over a new feature in Excel 2016 referred to as the Quick Analysis. And we'll go here under Quick Analysis. At this point here under Quick Analysis, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit, you have a bunch of numbers. There are the directions here on the right hand side as well. So what you can do is you look at the bottom right of the selection and that's where you'll see the Quick Analysis button. And from there, you can explore the various different options. For example, you can get charts, you can get totals and tables with just one single click. So the way you'll do that is by simply selecting this range of data. And now notice you have this quick analysis area here. So you click on it and then you can see here the data bars, very similar to what we saw earlier that you can apply to this a color scale that you could apply based on the values in there. Additionally, you could use uh, icon sets, greater values, or the other thing that you can do here is you can go under charts and you can see a preview of various possible charts that you could utilize from that data. Or you can access the totals. For example, getting the totals here, notice in the very bottom now it added a new average column or counting, or percentages, or a running total. So it's another way of you utilizing some of the functions that we learned manually, but utilizing them with a single click from here. The other thing that you can do here under tables, you could uh, create here a fancier looking table if you needed to, a pivot table, 
that you can massage the data uh, in various ways and we'll cover the pivot tables toward the end of this tutorial as it gets more complex here but uh, this is where you kind of get the idea and then uh, for example notice it's doing pivot table calculations here financial miscellaneous and all that type of stuff by various categories and then uh, additional functions as well then you have also these various uh, types of uh, lines and columns or win versus loss that it's going to apply within a specific cell so this is within the actual cell or demonstrate the trends for the data so you can check them out for yourself as well and then you can format these by using various styles here in Excel. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a new feature, uh, particularly in Excel 2016. In this next session, we're going to learn how to sort and filter data in Excel. Well, suppose that we have this data in this worksheet here. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to sort this data by date ascending. So to sort the data, all you have to do is uh, you click on that field anywhere within that uh, column or where the data field is, and then go under sort and filter here and then choose to sort them from oldest to newest or newest to oldest. So we want to order them in ascending order. So this is ascending right here. And you could do that for any of those other cells here as well. Now, the next thing that we want to learn here is how to enable filtering for this data. How do we filter? So for example, we want to see only the sales by quad or by sunset or whatever it is that the product that we are selling here so the way to do that is very simple again you go anywhere in your data and then click on sort and filter then we click here on filter and that enables the filtering for this worksheet let's say we want to filter here by a sales rep so all we have to do is here is click on this drop down that we got these new drop downs now that we enabled filtering and then pick the, uh, the salesperson. So let's say we want only Smith here and then click OK. And now notice that only the sales from Smith will show up. And here at this point, we could sort it by other options as well. For example, we could sort, use what we learned earlier as well. So under largest from smallest and so on. Now, if you wanted to remove the specific filter, you'd click on the filtering icon here and then uncheck that specific filter and then click to select them all and it's going to display all of them again the data is not going to disappear it's still there but it's just filtering it a different way the other thing that you can do is you can filter by multiple items or multiple options by simply clicking here on let's say we select the eastern section so that's one filter that we applied and then we are going to also filter by a specific rep here on um, let's say we want to see Smith again and then that's a case of filtering by more than one criteria the other thing that you can do as well is that uh, you can filter by a specific value so if you go here under filter numbers you can choose to show the top 10 above average or a specific like uh, if the value equals or is greater than let's say uh, 400. notice it will take out this value at least here 357 it will not show up and now we have multiple filtering options within the same data file so it's pretty cool play with it and apply all kinds of other filters and options in there but it's one of the key features of excel beyond the very basics In this session, I'm going to uh, cover the different types of references in Excel. They serve as a foundation for learning Excel and utilizing data in Excel spreadsheets. So if you're following the tutorial, let's go to the types of references here. And then here under the types of references, we are going to 
uh, tinker with this type of data here. Let me make this slightly bigger for ourselves. So we talked earlier about the various types of references here. So for example, um, you put a formula here, it says uh, sum C6 through E6, and then the next one is C7 through E7, uh, C8 through E8, and so on. So that everything here is in a sequence. We were able to drag this downward, and the calculations were performed correctly, because the cells shifted one at a time in sequence. So here under data references though, let's suppose that we have a budget of $20,000. And then also we have a decrease in the budget by 5%. So then we want to calculate here the difference. Well, the way to calculate the difference in this case would be by using one of the, the knowledge that we uh, learned from the previous tutorials is by using the equal sign. We're using a formula here, the training B8, times the 5%, which is B6. And then we hit enter, and notice it's $200, which is correct. If we wanted to use the autofill feature to drag this down, notice what will happen. First, on the next cell, you get a blank value. The next one, you get these number signs. The number signs, by the way, what they mean is that the content of that cell does not fit. So what you need to do is basically adjust the width of the cell by simply dragging it to the right-hand side. And now, notice it fits. The other trick here is that you can double-click and it will make the width of that cell exactly properly to the proper width needed. So double-clicking between the columns there, it will do that. Now notice that we are giving up from travel here that was $2,000 and we had to give up 5%. Notice it ended up being $10 million. What's happening is, is that as we are using the autofill feature here to populate the formulas, what's happening is, is that it's instead of B6, which was correct in the first one, now it's moving to B7. B7, it's multiplying this blank one right here, the red cell. The next one is, it's multiplying two 8,000 here by 4,000, and then the 10 million comes by multiplying 2,000 times 5,000. And that's where we came with that. So now, to correct this, what we could do is, we could utilize what's called an absolute reference. So you have three types of references, typically. You have the relative references, and relative it means it's going to move. As you use the autofill feature from one cell to the other, it's going to automatically change, and that's what happened here. The absolute references are those that you can go and tell the computer right here that this B6, it's an absolute reference. I don't want it to shift whether left to right or top down, and in this case, to convert it into an absolute reference, and that probably will be your question, is by putting dollar signs in front of it. You could put the dollar signs manually, like that, and it takes quite a bit of time. Or you can do it by pressing the F4 key on your keyboard. So if I tap the F4 key here on the, on the reference that I want to lock, that will put the dollar signs automatically. And then I tap F4 again, that changes to what's called a, a mixed reference. Mixed because this B6 is saying that the column here, column B, is not locked, but the row 6 is going to be locked in this case. If I press the F4 key again, notice it switched to a different type of mixed reference where now the column is going to be locked and so on. So, all in all, what we need to do here is this 5%, we don't want that to be changing, we lock it with the dollar signs and make it an absolute reference. And then you drag this down and now you have the proper calculations here. So out of 2,000, 5%, that's, uh, you have to give up uh, $100. So that's the idea here. And we utilized this in the previous section as well when we did the basic concepts earlier, or the basic calculations earlier. 
This gives you the flexibility to change this. Okay, what, what would happen if I chose 7%? What would I have to give up? And now notice right here. Now the difference you could also calculate here at total. And for 7%, they'd have to give up 1400 If I made it 8%, then they'd have to give up 1800 and all that type of thing. So that's the beauty of using Excel and uh, using references here. Now you'd say, well, what about if I wanted to enter those references manually? Would that work? Yes, that would have worked, but you'd have to do it for every single one of them. And if you have a lot of data, which particularly in business you do, then that becomes a waste of time. So how can you use the mixed references? So here's an example of using the mixed references in Excel here. In this case, we'll create here a multiplication table. We want to multiply the row starting at B21, and we want to let the left column change, but not the row number. We want to multiply this times that, and then continue it this times that, and then that times that, and give us all the possible calculations here. But we want to do that by using a single formula to design this. So basically, in the first one is we want to lock the row here so that 21, B21, does not change. So we do the equal sign, and it is B. We could click on it, B21. And we want to lock the row, so we want the dollar sign right in front of 21. And then we want to multiply it by A22. And in this case, we want to lock it, the column, because we want the column to move from one to the other, and let the rows shift. So we want to make the dollar sign right in front of A, like that and then hit enter. Now notice the first one is right. So it's gonna do a B21 times A22. And that is one times one is one. Now if we go to the right here and use the other fill feature to the right, notice what it did. It did C21 times A22. So that is correct as well. So again, that the point here was that it went from B to C, and then it's gonna to move to D, E, and all that type of th uh, stuff. It's gonna keep things in sequence. So I could replicate this all the way to 10. And notice it's correct. Now, I could also go down here because our formula is correct on this first cell, and I could replicate it also downward. So now what it's doing here, notice, it's saying it went from B21, which is static, it's going to A22, A24, and on and on and on. And we have not moved from a B column, that's why it has B. Now if we go here to, to the next one, and we drag this down, the formula is still going to be consistent, and it's saying C21. So notice C21, which is up here, 2, times A23, which is this one over here, and so on. So basically, we were able to create here a multiplication table with simply by setting one calculation or one formula using mixed references, and we were able to replicate that. So there are other uses on how to use the mixed references and the absolute references. Uh, the most common one would be the absolute references that we adjusted earlier, that we utilized earlier. But uh, the mixed references, as you can see, they are quite powerful here as well in knowing how to uh, design them. So again, this was locking the row on the top, on the first one. And then on this side, we're locking the column. So hopefully that makes sense, and you'll find that this comes in handy in the next sections here.
In this next session, we're going to learn how to create charts in Excel. We have here a variety of data options in our worksheet, and we want to create charts for them. So the concept of creating charts is uh, pretty simple. Basically, the way it works is that you select the data, and then you click on charts. Now, the option to create the chart, you can either use this option right here in the bottom under charts, the quick analysis tool that we saw from earlier, or the other option that serves as a better concept is by going here under the insert tab and then choosing recommended charts. Notice there are all kinds of other charts here as well, such as column charts, hierarchy, pie charts, and so on. The idea is uh, to use the right chart for the right type of data representation. Sometimes it's very easy to skew the data by representing it the wrong type of chart. So typically, if you're dealing with percentages, you want to use a pie chart. If you're using with a, a dealing with a long date range, which includes a lot of values and such, then you probably would use a line chart and so on. In Microsoft Excel here, there is also this option of recommended charts. So based on the data that you have selected, it's going to give you what um, Excel recommends in this case. So notice here I selected part of the column here in the first row as well, and I click OK, and that's the chart for just this set of data, just toys, boomerangs, and in-store sales. If I want to tweak that chart even further, all I have to do is go and pick some other different designs from here on the top. I could also go and pick and change the colors to use a different color scheme. And uh, you can also change the layout if you prefer a different layout. Notice how it's putting the numbers in various areas here through the live preview. And you could add different elements as well. Notice the contextual tools here on the top as well. Under the format, you could tweak the formatting, change additional properties for this chart and also additional options to the right of this chart. Those are some of just the basic concepts on how you create the chart, how you kind of uh, tinker with it. Now, the next thing that I'll try to show you here is that in some cases, you might have in-store sales, website sales, and you have three sets of data. So how do you apply that in a chart? Well, it's the same concept. You select the range of data here, and you go under Insert, and then recommended charts as well. And then pick the recommended type of chart that might come in handy for you. You click OK, and here is the grouped chart for this set of data. Now, of course, you can drag this and move it elsewhere in your worksheet where you're working with and customize it even further. The other type of chart that you could create here, here's another example of sales, for example, across multiple years. So in this case, you want to select the data, and then you go under Insert, and then Recommended Charts again. And notice the first recommended chart that Microsoft recommends here is a line chart, because you're dealing with multiple years, you want to see the pattern within those years. So pick the one that you prefer, and notice you have the chart right there. Now at this point, as we mentioned earlier as well, you can customize this with uh, various other designs to make it more visually appealing for your audience. Notice you can also switch the rows of the columns and you can change the data selection as well, including the uh, changing the type of chart. Notice under the quick layout, as we discussed earlier, you can include additional values and options within your chart. The next example here, it goes against a year or a complete item. So now uh, we can select this set of data and then go under insert, choose recommended charts. And then at this point, the first option that Microsoft is giving us is the column chart. Because notice if you chose the pie chart here, it will probably not work quite as well because everything is pretty much very closely together. So click on it, and there is the column chart for this specific year. Uh, the next option is uh, multiple tests. This is very similar to what we used earlier in this one. And this type of chart, you can simply select it, the data, and then again insert the type of chart. 
notice it's a column chart in some cases you might want a line chart so that you can see the interactions or interfacing of them accordingly now in the cases where you want uh, to skip a specific area of data in your chart what you can do and this is kind of a neat little trick here is uh, basically let's say i want to create a chart only for test one and test three and notice you have test two in the middle what you can do is you hold down the control key while selecting the data range and then at this point you go in under insert and then insert some kind of chart that you may prefer here so let's say i say line chart and i want to compare how one and three is doing and that generates only the tests one and three in this case skipping test number two so again the key there was to hold down the control key while selecting the data range so that's charts in a nutshell feel free to tinker with them of course they can customize them even further and utilize them even more effectively In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Flash Fill feature in Excel 2016. This is a new feature that performs certain functions or certain tasks automatically. We learned about one of those earlier here, for example, as we are tinkering earlier with data. As we we're tinkering earlier with data here, we noticed that, for example, to calculate the annual income, it would be the net pay times 12 for example, so it would be F6 times 12. That was our example from earlier. We hit the enter and notice this whole area got automatically filled. So the calculation that we're gonna perform later, it uh, got done automatically by the auto fill feature or the flash fill feature in Excel 20. 16. So that was one of the functions of it in flash filling some kind of range of cells that we are potentially were going to autofill manually later. Now in this case here we have the email address of a bunch of individuals and we don't have their first and last name. Let's say we need that for uh, building uh, spreadsheet of sorts so we want to separate those so in this case what you can do is you can start typing here for some of the first name so we want to do Nancy and then the next one we type Andrew now notice as we are typing Andrew here it's flash filling notice it's matching the rest of the rows so it's determining what we are doing here in this cell and looking at other subsequent cells and whether it could save us time and now if we are happy with it we simply hit enter and notice it's all complete now the next one here we put okay we say last name and then we want to do as well the same thing so we put free and notice i just started type the next last name here from this area and i hit enter and notice it filled it out automatically so it's pretty cool pretty powerful now we have two separate uh, columns here that we could use for a mail merge or for other functionality and that's the flash fill feature in this session I'm going to demonstrate how we can utilize formulas to get values or calculations from another worksheet within a spreadsheet so basically we want to calculate for example the training expenses get the totals from another worksheet here for example under January we want to get this total and present it and post it on the main worksheet so we are creating a summary worksheet from values and references from other worksheets so here's how it works so you basically have the summary worksheet here you have the training for january march april and all that type of thing and uh, also we have these worksheets for each month for example january expenses and you're keeping track of all of these expenses throughout the month in here then you also have the one for other months so the way it works is, is that um, typically let me first illustrate this in a different way in h6 let's say we have a value of 55 now under here let's say anywhere else here on the right hand side 
I want to post this value via formula somewhere else. Now take note of the steps that I'm performing here. It's very easy. To post this value, other than typing 55 in there, it, I would need to do the equal sign and then the reference. So equal sign, I go and click on the reference and then the third step is I hit enter. Again, equal sign, click on the reference, hit enter. Now, here the, it works the same way. We have the training expenses and those expenses are under this other worksheet for January called January. I go here, I put the equal sign where I want my formula posted, that's step number one. I go to wherever the value is, for example this would be for training, training, this is the total, I click on it, and then the third step is hit enter. I can repeat this process also for office supplies. Again, equal sign, go to wherever the worksheet is, choose office supplies here, hit enter. It's just as easy as that. And you can repeat that process. Now what happens is, is that if I went here and on my office supplies, let's say they spent more than that and now it came to $7.99 instead of $5.99. Uh, if I go back to my summary worksheet, notice that those totals are automatically updated. And that's the beauty of using this functionality. You can do this also another way by using named, what's called named references. So the way that works is that, for example, here under computer expenses, this total here, I want to name it. I want to give it a name so I can reference it in the future in other locations. And this comes in handy for large worksheets where you could say 2016 budget total. You could name that total and then you can call it from anywhere else in the worksheet. So here we could say computer uh, January computer expenses. So the, what you can do is you go here to where you have the formula or the total and the existing formula within that worksheet for January. And then you go under formulas here and you choose define name. You're just giving it a name. So you're saying this location with this formula, I'm going to call it something. So I click on name and then I call it January expenses. And notice it's, what it's doing is it's referencing this specific worksheet, a specific cell, and notice it's also using an absolute reference. So I click OK. So we name it something meaningful here. It has to start with a lower case and it can't have special characters and any of that type of stuff. And then we click OK. Now notice here on the top left, it's actually now for this reference, it's not going to be D7, even though you can reference it by whatever D33 here, but it's actually giving it a name. Now if we go here to cross sheet calculations and we want to post the computer expenses, we could even do it simpler than we did it for these other two options by using the name reference. So now at this point we are ready to use the named reference that we uh, saved from earlier. Let's assume we want to go here and call the January expenses and what we can do is we can simply go under the formulas area and then we choose use in a formula and then call the January expenses from here and then just hit enter. The other option we could have done was we could have hit the equal sign and then just start typing and notice it will pop up as January expenses. Double click on it, hit enter and it will pull the value that you had from here. Now if we changed one of those, as this total changes, notice that the total here will change as well. So this is a great way to call references across the worksheet or other worksheets within your workbook or spreadsheet and populate that data for a summary or for various calculations within your spreadsheet. And that was uh, using the two methods, uh, one of them manually by uh, pulling the values, the other one was by defining a name for those references.
In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate percentages in Excel. And I'll have a couple of scenarios here. So the first calculation will be calculating the percentage where a part is calculated against a total amount. For example, in the case of student one scored 87, and there were uh, possible of 100 points, now what is the percentage there? The other one would be the example of a return on investment. For example, you invested a certain amount of money in the, in the stock market or whatever, and at the end of the year you got a certain amount. Now, what? how many percent did you gain or lose there? And then the third part would be to calculate the percentage of sales, increasing or decreased sales, and calculate the percentage, for example, on the discount or on an increase toward a whole. So let's go for the first example first here. So we have, uh, for example, student one here, they scored 87% or 87 points, and the total number of points is uh, going to be against 100. So in this case, we want to represent what was the percentage that they got in this. Of course, we could do this without using an Excel formula, but uh, it's on purpose in this case. So we do equal here, and the way you do that is by uh, the first number. In this case, I'm going to do it manually here, uh, B7 divided by the possible points. So in this case, it will be C7. And then all you do is you hit enter. Now, one thing to remember as well here is that when you're doing the calculation, you need to also format this into a percentage value. So, and this I had done it earlier, so that's how you do it. Basically, just click on the percent item uh, formatting, select the range, and then choose the percent formatting or under here, percentage. So that's the first example. So that came to 87%. So this student scored 87%. Now, this is a little bit more complex. We want to calculate the return on investment percentage. So let's suppose that in the beginning of the year, we invested $1,000. Now, at the end of the year, we got $1,200. And we want to determine as to what percentage did we get at the end of the year. What was the return of an investment? Again, format this to be percentages, and then you put in the formula. In this case, we're going to do equal sign. Basically, the way we calculate this, if you remember your math and such, we do the end of the year minus the beginning of the year divided by what we invested initially at the beginning of the year. And we have to put that in parentheses. So basically, it would be C16. minus B16, or you can click on those as well if you wanted to, divided by the initial investment, which would be B16. And then we hit enter. Notice the return of an investment on the first one was 20%. And then if we wanted to calculate the next one, you could do it manually, or you can do it using the autofill, or you can just let Excel 2016 do it for you like it did a moment ago. So if I, another way to do this would be open parentheses, initial uh, end of the year investment, minus initial investment. And notice it's taking those labels from here, from my table here. That's why I did it manually at the first example. Then divide it by the initial investment. Hit enter it's 25%. And you could repeat this. So in this case, they lost 20% of the investment. So that's how you do the return of investment at the end of the year. That's example number two for calculating percentages. Now in the third example, we want to calculate, uh, for example, we have uh, these employees and this is uh, their annual salary that they had and now we want to give them a bonus or we want to increase their salary. And for example, for the first employee, we want to give $1,200 in addition to what they currently had. So now we want to calculate what was the percentage of increase that they got this year. The way to do that uh, calculation would be very similar to the first example. You just uh, do the equal sign and then the bonus divided by the salary. 
and then hit enter so they are getting uh, 12 percent the first employee is getting 12 percent and the other ones are getting uh, accordingly as we see here so that would be the percent plus or minus here the other thing to keep in mind as well as you are working with these percentages and besides formatting them in percentages you might want to have the decimal points to at least two so we want to increase this by two areas so so format all of this by increasing the decimal points for all the cells so now this is more accurate for for example employee two got 5.95 percent increase in their salary if you had to figure out as well for example you are increasing the salary of employees by 15 percent or 12 percent or whatever uh, here's how you can uh, do it as well so basically so this would be increase and we're going to put the number statically at this point but we're going to do the equal sign here the value times and then the percentage point so the percentage point in this case it was going to be 0.7 percent so that would be 0 0.7 would be the calculation now if we were to increase everybody's salary by seven percent this is what it would be for each one of them now if we wanted to, to know how much is their total salary going to be we could go back and modify our formula to be um, the salary times 1.07 because we just want to see what it went above what they are earning earlier so hit enter there and notice now the new salary at seven percent increase it's going to be ten thousand seven hundred here and so on so the idea that i wanted to demonstrate here was how to calculate it by a specific percentage so you can see just the increase and this would be by adding the one in front of it that would be what would be the new total for that employee so that you can kind of save another column to add numbers and all that stuff but you're doing it all in one cell for this calculation so hopefully that is helpful there these were three different scenarios on calculating percentages in excel and it should cover pretty much most of the uh, scenarios out there for you. In this session we're going to learn about using financial functions in Excel and particularly we're going to focus on three of them at this point as we know there are hundreds of them and for the sake of time we can't cover all of them so the first one is PMT which is the interest payment for a period on a loan then the IPMT is the interest payment over a period of time and then the PPMT is the principal payment for a specific period that you are calculating as we learned earlier as well uh, the way to uh, find out how to use that specific function is by going to let's say over here we want to insert a function and then we search as to what we want to search for so for example PMT first and notice PMT it says it calculates the payments for a loan based on a constant payments and a constant interest rate so we click uh, you can also click on help on this function it will go to Microsoft and it will explain this further by uh, explaining the syntax for it and some examples and remarks and all that type of thing so you can explore these for yourself as well but uh, the way it will work here is that um, for PMT for example it needs these values in red in black here so we need to post those in in black so we need to figure out the rate what is the interest rate per month so the key there it's going to be per month so notice i have this working area down here so the interest rate uh, when you get a loan it would be let's say 19.99 or five percent or three percent loan that you're receiving but yet the rate that the computer needs it's per month therefore we need to do a little bit extra calculations here the nper it is the number of payments that you are going to be paying 
So uh, that would be, uh, for example, if you're getting a loan for five years, that would be a 60 months. And uh, if you are getting a home loan for 30 years, that would be 360 months. And then the PV, it's the present value. And that means how much is your loan? You're getting a $100,000 loan or a $10,000 loan and so on. So the actual total amount that you are borrowing. So, but before we do any of these calculations, we need to have some sub calculations, for example, for the rate that needs to be for the month. The easiest would be to utilize uh, something very similar to this to lay this out. So you say my interest rate is, let's say, 5%. And you have to format this in percent before you forget to do that. Click on percent here. Then it says interest payments per year. That's like your number of payments that you're going to make for a year. That would be 12 in this case. And then the interest payment per month. Now you're calculating this basically by dividing C13, which is the percent rate, divided by 12 or by the number of payments. So we could actually, instead of using 12 there, we could have used the actual reference for it, which would be C14. And then we hit enter. Now notice the other trick here as well is that we are calculating this with uh, a bunch of uh, increased numbers or values here because uh, I think in the business world they use up to five digits after the period. So here we have a little bit more than that, but we could kind of control it by this right there. So that would be our payment in interest rate per month in this case. Then the number of years, we are taking the loan for five years, and that means it's going to multiply C14, which is the number of payments per year, times the number of years, and it's giving us the NPR, which is the number of payments. And then the PV is the total amount that we are borrowing. In this area here, what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the principal payment, the PMT. So now what we do in this case, we go here under formulas, insert function, and we find the PMT option, click OK, and then we go here under rate. Well, rate, all we have to do is click on the C15 because we calculated it already. Then the NPER, NPER, it's 60 in this case, so we click on C17, and then the PV, we click on the value here for the amount, and then leave everything alone, we click OK, and it comes to $188.72. 71 cents for $10,000 for five years at 5%. Now, if we were going to borrow this for 15%, notice it went to $237 over five years. Now, if we were borrowing a loan for a house for $300,000, and we are paying it over 30 years, our payment at 15% would be $3,793. But yet, for uh, mortgage rates at this point, they're not 15%, fortunately. They might be about 5% or 6%. So at 5%, you'd be spending, if you're borrowing a $300,000 loan, you're going to pay every month $1,610. That's why it's important to keep that, uh, to be able to get that good interest rate because that can tinker with it. So that's one way to calculate this. Now, the other way to calculate uh, the PMT in this case without having to do all this work sheet here, which is actually, I strongly recommend that you utilize it this way. It would be by using the formula this way. We go under insert, 
and then we choose here the PMT function and then it says rate we want to get the rate but the rate has to be calculated per per month so we say it's five actually we click here on the rate the interest rate is five percent and then we need to divide that by 12 for each month the NPER would be the number of payments so if you know that you're getting this loan for 30 years then you could do 30 times 12 so you're saying there are going to be total number of payments for the loan it's uh, 30 times 12 360 then the PV would be the present value the amount of your loan and then you hit OK here and we get the same value so this is a little bit more work to set it up initially but it's more useful in the long run this is quicker to get it going but you're embedding specific numbers and values within the cells interest uh, payment for a particular period that means that uh, we want to know how much interest are we going to pay on that first payment our payment was sixteen hundred dollars per month now we want to calculate the interest that we are paying for that first month so we go here under and we find here IPMT and then click OK and then we want to figure out what the rate is so the rate fortunately we're going to use this worksheet that I have prepared or you can do the calculations like I showed you earlier so we have C15 that's your rate the PER it wants to know the period in which you want to find out your interest rate what you're paying for interest on that period so in this case we said we want to find the first payment that we make how much are we paying on interest so we put just number one first payment the NPER here it would be the number of total payments and then the PV it's actually the value that you're borrowing then we go here and click OK and now notice that on the first payment if you're borrowing three hundred thousand dollars at five percent for thirty years on the first payment you are going to pay one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars in interest if you are going to change this to the second payment notice it's probably going to be a little bit less one thousand two hundred forty eight dollars for the second payment of course that interest it's going to drop from payment to payment to payment so on the, let's say on the 359th period you'd be paying only thirteen dollars in interest that's why it's important to have as much money up front to pay for a house or something if you can because you're avoiding a twelve hundred dollar interest payment of the first one so now let's calculate how much your principal payment is going to be for this loan and specifically in this case for month number one of course we could do it by deducting sixteen hundred by doing the subtraction from here but we're going to do it using the function here in Excel so the way we do that is by going here under the insert function and then we want to find the PPMT click on OK and then again we're going to use the same thing so it's going to be rate PR the period so the rate the period the number of payments and the present value so we have the rate the period the first time or the first payment that we are making to the loan company then the number of total payments then the present value and then when we have filled out all of these values we click OK here and notice it comes to three hundred and sixty dollars that we are paying monthly toward our principal toward our three hundred thousand dollars so in the first month we are paying sixteen hundred dollars in total but only three hundred and sixty is applying toward the three hundred thousand so that's in brief how you can utilize the some of the financial calculations or financial functions in Excel 2016 it's the same way that you can do it in the previous versions as well
this next session, we are going to learn about using logical functions as part of a formula in Excel. We are going to learn about three different ways of how to utilize the if statement within a formula. The first way will be that if the employees here reach $20,000 in sales, then for those that reach 20 or more, then they can get $250 bonus. And then in this case, we are going to say, yes, that is true for George and Michael and Darius and so on. Then the next uh, set here in the next column, we're going to display yes or no. We're going to represent it with a yes or no, the words yes or no. And then in the third column, we're going to actually post the amount that they get as additional. This is how it works. So basically you have the sales that they accomplished as part of the worksheet then you have the criteria that you're determining. This is the criteria. It could be $20,000. It could be $10. It could be $100,000. And then here you're saying this is how much they will get if they pass that criteria. To use the if statement, we can do it by going here under Formulas tab. And then we click on Insert Function. You can also click here under Logical and use the if function as well but we'll use the longer way to start here. So we go here under the if function, and then you could just type if. Now in our case, it's actually showing up automatically here. So if it was not, then it's gonna bring it up. Now if it says it checks whether a condition is met and it returns one value if it's true and another value if it's false. So that's what we want to do here. We're going to say post the words true or false. So we click on it, and now it says, what is the logical test? The logical test, so we have to say, if the sales, if these guys here, for John, if the sales, that's if B6, is greater than or equal to the criteria, then if that is true, we want to post in there the words true. So notice we have true or false. So we want to just put the words true. Or you could say it is true if it so basically you can put whatever you want. If not, false. Now the other thing to do here is to keep in mind, notice that this bonus criteria here. We don't want that to change. And if you remember from the types of references, we want to make that an absolute reference. So you press the F4 key to put the dollar signs so that when you use the autofill feature, that does not populate the other cells incorrectly. So we want to lock it to the criteria of 20,000. So again, so far what we did here, if B6, this value is greater or equal to 20,000, which is uh, B12, then we're going to post the words it is true otherwise we're going to post the words false and then the other thing we did we just used the absolute reference then we click ok now this it says it's true he made twenty thousand three hundred eighty two dollars now we use the autofill feature here to move down to the other ones and it says george here he got only nineteen thousand so he doesn't get the bonus and so on so that was one method the other method is to post here yes or no. The words actually yes or no. It's going to be very similar to the previous option here that we did. So we click here on insert function under the formulas tab. We click on if, OK. And then we, again, we say pretty much what we did earlier. We click on the reference here. If B6 is greater than equal to the her or to the criteria, 12, we make that an absolute reference by pressing F4, then we put here yes. If it's false, no. And then click OK. Now this is the first one they did. They get a bonus. The other ones, they don't get a bonus. Now, on the third option here, on the third reference, what we're going to do is we're actually going to post the actual amount, which would be this amount. So, and if they didn't get it, then we put a zero in there. So uh, again, we go under the formulas tab, click on insert function, and then the if function, then we say if 
this reference be 6 greater or equal to the criteria, make it an absolute value, then they get the bonus, which is B13. Now we want to do that as an absolute reference as well, otherwise they get zero. And then we click OK, and notice the first one gets a $250 bonus, the other ones they get accordingly. And of course, if we are doing additional calculations here, you could have another column here to calculate the totals and for their income and such, and that would complete it. In this session, we're going to learn a little bit about one-click forecasting in Excel 2016. This is a new feature actually in Excel 2016, and it's quite powerful. If you have a series of data that includes timelines and um, uh, specific values, what you can do is that you can select these values, and then, as we have here in the directions, you can explore the options in the bottom of this and create a forecast for this. So basically, uh, what, uh, what you do here is you select the values from our worksheet, and then we go to the data on the data ribbon here, and then we click on the forecast sheet. It's going to create a new worksheet to predict data trends and preview different forecast options before generating your visual forecast worksheet. Again, it's new only in Office 2016 at this point. So if you don't, if you're using uh, previous versions of Excel, you can skip to the next session. So we click here on forecast sheet, and notice this is the trends that it's displaying what it will be for airport passengers, for example. And from here, you can customize the date parameters and, and others. And you can see the trends and the forecasting here. So that's briefly, with one click, how you can use the forecasting options based on an existing set of data. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate very briefly how to utilize a couple of the new types of charts available only in Excel 2016. These charts are utilized to visualize hierarchical levels of data with ease here. So we have this data, and what you need to do is you go under Insert, and then you go to these new types of charts. For example, the hierarchy chart is to compare parts to a whole, or when several columns or categories hierarchy, or when several columns or categories form a hierarchy here. So we have, for example, the major company here, then you have the subcompanies, and then the subdivisions as well. So what you do here is you click on it, and notice you click on the tree map, and the tree map, as you can see the description right there, it highlights the specific companies and sub areas to them. It gives us a visual representation based on the data. And notice at this point, we can customize this however we want as well in new ways, all automatically. So that was one of the types of charts. The other one is if we go back here to the chart type or we go back to insert chart again. The other one is the sunburst which compares values across hierarchy levels, shows proportions within the levels as rings. So this is another pretty cool one as well. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to utilize pivot tables in Excel. Pivot tables are a powerful feature of Excel. There are a couple requirements that you need to know before you start tinkering them with them and finding that they don't work. The first thing is that the first row should contain the field names for the data that you are analyzing and working with. The second thing is that the records or individual transactions must be in rows, very similar to this, for example, the region and all that type of thing. 
then the third option is that uh, there should be no blank cells or rows within the data that you're evaluating. So you have to make sure that there is something in every one of them. And fourthly, the data must be surrounded by blank columns, meaning you have nothing in the immediate space to where your data is. So to utilize the pivot tables, what you do is basically select the data. And then of course, you can use this uh, quick analysis tool here if you needed to. And once you select the, all the data, you go under insert, and then you go under pivot table. You could also choose here, and this is new in 2000, Excel 2016, you could choose recommended pivot tables. And then in this case, notice uh, it's gonna uh, customize it by region sum of costs of goods sold by region or by sum of sales by specific individuals or count by products and so on. So you could kind of tinker with any of these options as well by using the recommended uh, tables here. But uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on the pivot table here so you get the idea. And what it's going to do is it's going to create, this is the selection that we're going to use and it's going to create a new worksheet for us to work with and massage and tinker with this data. Click OK here. And now at this point, we could tinker with any of these options. So let's say we want to see by region. And notice it built the table here by, it put all the different regions. Then let's say we wanted to see by customers. So now notice we have the region here, Midwest, and now we have all the different customers or companies for each one of those. And then we want to see, let's say the cost of goods sold. That would be the next one. And then sales as well. So now we can kind of get an idea here. So we have that data all kind of in a big mess. Now we can make more sense out of it by sorting it out and utilizing, let's say the first one we said here, we used the region. Then we wanted the company for each region and then the sales within each region. Now, of course, you could sort this and do all, all kinds of other stuff. Now, by clicking on this drop down here, you can also choose to exclude certain areas and so on. So that was one type of uh, pivot table there. If we click here again, we can go in and change this. And uh, let's say we don't want it by, by region anymore. Now we want it by sales rep. So sales rep, notice uh, first we have here uh, the companies. And if we want to change the order, we just drag it further up. The sales rep to make the sales rep first. If you want it to filter by a specific region, you can add the filter up here. So I can drag the a region, for example, and make it as a filter. And then I can pick here whichever region I want. It will show me only that specific region. I'm filtering it only for that specific region. And if I wanted to see only the sales by a specific salesperson, I can simply pick here the sales rep and then pick the additional fields that I want. So I can choose a product and see what product they sold and the, the totals and that type of thing. And then if I wanted a specific field to be sorted by or filtered by, I could even pick, uh, add it to the rows here and then choose to sort it at some point later to utilize that field for filtering. As uh, you work with pivot tables, it's basically going to be a matter of you, what you want it to look like, what you're looking for in that pivot table and how you want to sort and massage that table for the data that you want. Notice there is an option here as well for more tables. So you could click on yes to that. And basically in this case, you can choose to analyze, for example, by industry or by company. And you can even choose to detect relationships if there were any and things of that nature. Remember also that once you are in the pivot table already, you can choose here from the options for pivot tables. You can pick from one of those predefined ones as well. Maybe you want sales by region. Okay, there's a sales by region. Of course, you might want the sales rep. There is a sales rep as well that you just added. And you want to put also the customers then eventually. And now you have the sales by region, by a salesperson, and the items that were sold. 
and then you can also add this product within each one of those notice as you're working with a pivot table so let's say you have this type of uh, table that you created here using the pivot options here on the right hand side and what you can do as well is that you can create a pivot chart so it's basically going to take the information from this and build a chart out of it so notice I picked the pivot chart pick any of those designs click OK and now it built a chart for us based on the selected data pivot tables again are very powerful tinker with it from the different angles and utilize even the charts within them as well in this session i'm going to cover a new feature in excel 2016 that of data gathering Basically with Excel now what you can do is that you have a website very similar to this for example This is info please and then this is the cost of living index for your selected US cities Now what you can do is you can go under Excel here and you can go under data and Then under this section get and transform what you can do is uh, create a new query where it will link with that external data bring it into Excel and then you can tinker with it however you need to so you click here on new data and then you choose from other sources and then choose from the web from here now you need to enter the URL of that page that we saw earlier so we just copy and paste it and it takes a little bit to bring in the data to connect and then in this case we'll pick table 0 so it shows us the data that we saw earlier but in a slightly different format here then we scroll down here and then you can choose to edit it and tweak it now notice it says that the preview has been truncated uh, because that's just a preview in this case that it's displaying us and then you click on load and now this data is here in excel and you can uh, tweak it and tinker with it and customize it the way you need to and utilize other analysis tools that we have learned so far in the use of Excel. Notice we have this quick analysis. Now we can pick here and highlight and utilize the tools like I mentioned that we have learned about so far. Of course you can create charts, totals, and other functions as well. Notice if you hold the mouse on it, it'll uh, give you some uh, additional information here as to uh, summaries and things of that nature. About this data but the main idea here is to gather the data from major websites out there bring it into Excel and then you work with it the way you need to uh, customize it additionally there are a couple of new charts for financial analysis that you can utilize to visualize the profits and losses against across financial data for example let's assume that you have this financial income statement here and uh, we select the data and then we go under insert and then we go under the waterfall or stock chart so we choose this one here the stock chart and we'll make this slightly larger and now notice that uh, the gross profit here is the total so we go here under the profit this one right click on it and choose to set it as total what that will do is it will bring it down to the bottom of the chart then we notice also we have operating income that's another total so we find operating income right click set it as a total and then the net income it's another total as well right click set it as total and this gives us a visual view of how everything is performing in our income statement and this is a new type of chart starting in office 2016 or excel 2016. in this session i'm going to briefly cover a new feature in excel 2016 the 3d map feature or tour feature so let's suppose that we have all this data that we have collected so basically what you'd do is you'd go here under insert and then you want to choose this 3d map option create a new tour then in the layer pane 
So basically at this point here we have selected the fields that we want. We want under the location, we want the longitude and latitude, and then under the height we want to express here the customer count, how many customers, and then the quarter date. And then you could also specify additional fields here as well if you need it. Now what it's going to do is it's going to give you this map and you can rotate it in every which direction, identify in which states most of your customers are, and look at this data more closely as well if need be. Another option here is to play the tour, which will switch the tour to watch it play. In my case, since I'm recording this, it's going to be captured only in part of the screen, but if I play it, it's going to be displaying the data very similar to this. And in this case, you can identify the areas where you can do promotions or focus on your uh, customers and things of that nature. So it's a pretty cool feature and powerful feature in a business environment where you are collecting a lot of data and addresses and so on, and uh, then putting that into a visual 3D component here. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use one of the simple but yet important features in Excel, particularly when you're using a lot of data that you want to navigate. So, for example, let's say that we have this data file here or this uh, worksheet. And as we scroll down, notice how we lose track of what uh, the headers are here. Also, as we move from left to right, Notice that we lose track of what the first column is here. The question is, how can we make it so that actually the, the header and the first column stay put? Well, there are a couple ways to do it. The first way is uh, basically we could lock only the, uh, the header row here, just the top one. So what you can do is you go under the View tab and you go under the Freeze panes, and that is the feature that you want to use in this case. So you could choose Freeze Top Row and in this case, notice as we scroll down, the top row stays put and we can navigate up and down. However, if we were to go left and right, in this case, it's still not locked this first column. So to correct the problem, what we do is we go here to the very top again, and then we click right below the first row that we want to keep uh, locked and also right uh, to the right on the next column for the column that we want to lock. So once we select the cell that we want to keep as a key point for locking both the column and the row, then we go here under Freeze Panes, and then we simply click on Freeze Panes. At this point, we can scroll up and down, and the top row will stay locked, and we can scroll from left to right, and the column on the left will stay locked. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to set the print area in a worksheet in Excel. Typically, in a Word document, uh, you press print and it either the whole document prints out or a selection or a specific page prints out. In Excel, it's slightly different due to the spreadsheets being quite large and typically a worksheet can contain up to a million records. So uh, if you wanted to print only a specific area of your worksheet, you need to set what's called the print area. Right now, I've not set the print area yet in this one. So if we wanted to look as to what it will uh, print out or look for printing, if we go here under File and then choose Print, this is how it will print out. And it's going to print those pages just like that. But suppose I want only a specific chart or a specific area here to be printed out. In this case, what you have to do is go and select the area that you want to print out here. So let's say I want only this portion right here to be printed out. I can simply select this then go under Page Layout and then choose under Print Area. And then click on Set Print Area. And at this point, if I go to File, and print. Notice that my preview, it'll print only that specific section. Now to clear the print area for if you do not need that any longer, you click here on print area again and then choose clear print area.
and then you'd have to set it again for other pages or other sections of your worksheet. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to encrypt a document or set a password to your document before distribution and sharing it with others. So let's assume this is my document that I want to share with somebody else and I can click here under file and then you go under protect document and then you want to choose encrypt with a password. At this point you can put your password and the document at this point has been protected so anytime somebody tries to access it they'll be prompted for the password. So notice at this point it's asking me for the password. Now to remove the password, you simply go to the encrypt password again and just take out the password and that should take care of the encryption. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use predefined drop-down lists as somebody or your assistant or you're entering data in Excel so that the data that you entered is consistently spelled and it's consistently listed correctly based on a previously defined list. So in this case, let's say we have a sales rep and you have four or five salesmen and you're constantly entering and re-entering those names and you want to make sure that those names are all the time spelled appropriately. So what you can do is, and you can use this for products and other things as well, what you can do is in another sheet in your spreadsheet here, you can just create the names, define the names. So we have Hubert, Mark, John, Samantha, and Mimi, and so on. So now here, when you're entering it, you want always Hubert to be spelled correctly or to have a drop-down list of names. So we have this uh, column here. So now what you do is you go under data here. Under data, we want to do data validation. So basically data validation in this case is that it picks from a list of rules to limit the type of data that can be entered in a cell. It can be numbers, it could be a list of names and so on, like I mentioned earlier. So we click on data validation and we choose data validation here and then under what to allow, you, right now it's to allow any value in this column. However, we can go here under choose and choose a list. Only a list of predefined names can be allowed to be entered in there. So then we go here and it's saying, where is your source? Where is your list of data? And then you simply go to the sheet that has the list of names. In this case, it's sheet number four for me and we go over right here. Now you could pick a little bit of extra space here so that if you add another name in the future, you have the capability without having to change the de design of the spreadsheet. You can leave some of the blank areas here. So then we click OK. And now notice we are back to sheet number three. So now we are entering sales reps. Instead of you typing Tom, notice it doesn't allow you to do that. It says a user has restricted values that can be entered here. So now you have this drop down list. You have Hubert, Mark, John, and so on. So we click on Hubert and then you put the date and the item and all that type of stuff. Of course, date shouldn't be allowed like that either. So you can customize that for the next one. So you go to the next one and next one and so on. Now, if for some reason you wanted to add another client or salesperson, remember we had we specified a couple extra cells here. So we go here, we added it on the list. Now we go back and over here, Jonathan is listed as one of the salespeople. So you can use this for products, predefined products for your salespeople and so on. In this session, I'll briefly show you how to link data from an Excel spreadsheet 
into a Word document for the purpose of reports and so on. So there are a couple ways to take data from Excel and then utilize it in Microsoft Word. So let's see if we can demonstrate it very quickly here. So we go to Word and let's say this is my report. Let's say I have to do this report monthly and I have to take data from Excel and, and put it in my report for whether it is expenses or it could be whatever else. So one of the ways to get the data from Excel into Word is by simply clicking on saving this. So copying it from Excel and then I'm right clicking and choose copy or control C or however you copy stuff or click on copy and paste up here. And then I go back to Word and then I'm going to paste it. Now notice by simply pasting it in Word, it does not look anywhere close to what it was in Excel. Of course, I could go here and choose to use the destination or the keep the source formatting. So that's one way. It's not the greatest way. Now what you can do is you can actually link the data with the Excel spreadsheet. So once you link it once, as the data is updated from time to time from Excel, from your assistant or whoever else out there, that report, it's always up to date. All you have to do is open up the document and it will be up to date. So for that to work, what you do is you go into Excel. We copy and we select and copy the data. So I'm just copying it again. Those bars were there because I had copied it from before. Now we go back to Word and we click here under Paste, but instead of just choosing Paste, we are going to click on Paste Special. So choose Paste Special and then we're going to paste it as a link. So we are going to link it with Microsoft Excel. So it's linked to an Excel spreadsheet object. So basically the data is not really residing. It's of course posted in the document, but it's linked with the Excel document. So I'll demonstrate in a moment here. Since we pasted it, we can assume that the report is done. We're gonna save it. And we're gonna save it on the desktop. I call it this my monthly report. Now a month has passed by or whatever time has passed by and Notice my, uh, let's say my training expense for January in the previous report was $100 before. Now I'm going to make it $123. Now if I go to my document, and let's say I'll save it. Let's assume that a few months passed by. Now I go into my report. Double click on it. Notice the first thing that you'll get is it says this document contains links that refer to other files. Do you want to update this document or the data from the linked files? It's saying it's linked to Excel. Do you want this to be updated? So I say yes. And now this is my older junk here that I had from before. But notice the expense here for January for 123 has been updated. So the idea is that whatever you change here in Excel, as you're keeping track of things, it will be automatically posted and linked with Microsoft Word because we linked that data earlier. So if I go into Word, close it, and then save the Excel changes that I made, open it up again, say yes to update it, Again, ignore this part. Notice even the formatting has been updated from Excel. So it's a pretty neat tool. It's highly recommended that you utilize it in your work. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to import data from a CSV file or a text file. The CSV files are used quite a bit in larger businesses and corporations for transferring data between systems. It's a common file format 
that is utilized for transferring files. This is an example of a CSV file. It's called CSV because it's comma separated values. So notice these would be the columns. The system will know where the columns are separated by the comma when we bring this into Excel. So let's go back and we'll try to import that. Let me take note where it is located. Now the way you bring it in is by clicking on file, click on open, and then go and find the file basics. So we'll go under my computer or computer, click on browse, we'll go under downloads, go wherever it is located, and we're going to choose here to show us all files. So notice it's invoices list. Double click on it. Now you'll be presented with this wizard. Basically it's saying this is a CSV file or comma or delimited uh, text delimited file. So we are telling it, okay, it's text delimited. Usually you'd know that by whoever, wherever you got the, of course, the file to tell you what, whether it's comma delimited or tab delimited could be either one of them. Now you check this option here for my data has headers. What that means is that the first row of your data actually has the labels as to what that column stands for. Then we click on next. Then we tell the system that this is comma separated values. So the commas are what separate each field. Uh, if it was tab uh, delimited or semicolon delimited or something else, uh, you'd choose that. But uh, most of them are usually comma separated. Then you click on next. Then you could specify additional types of formatting here. Usually it's not necessary. And then you click on finish. Now at this point, that data from a text file has been imported into Excel. And notice I'm double clicking between the columns to make them fit correctly. Notice it's much cleaner. And now you can tinker with this data. You can create charts. You can create whatever you want to create, filter it and all that type of stuff. You save it, it's done. Let's choose save as here, browse where we want to save it. And then we don't want it as tab delimited, we want to save it as an Excel file. So we go here under Excel workbook and give it a name. It's gonna name it listed as invoices list, which is fine. And now it's an Excel format, just like any other Excel spreadsheet. Now at this point, if for some reason, let's assume this is a spreadsheet that you created in Excel. Now you want to send it to somebody in comma separated values, very similar to how we got it earlier. Now we click on file, choose save as, and then click on browse. Under this, the save as file type, this is where you tell it that it's going to be CSV, comma delimited file. Click on CSV, give it a name, and then click on save. And you want to keep using it to say yes. If we were to go back to that folder, notice it's with commas. So that's how you bring a file in. You bring it in from CSV and you export into a CSV. In this brief video, I'm going to explain how you can share and export or even print a file, an Excel file into a PDF format directly from Excel. So let's assume that this is our file that we wanted. And the first thing that you do is you click on file here and then you choose share. Under share, you can share it with email or invite other people to work with you on this document, but you'd have to have OneDrive configured. And you also have to save this file to the cloud, basically to the Microsoft cloud, or you can share it as an attachment, directly send it to somebody from here, or you can send it as PDF format directly from here as well. The other option you can do is you can export it directly into PDF. And this is how the easiest way to print something into PDF without having to have a PDF creator or Adobe or any of that type of stuff. So we click on export, create PDF, and we choose where we want to save it, give it a name, and then it will save it in PDF format. Now, of course, it chose to print there, 
only the area that we had selected to print from earlier on the print area. So that's how you print directly to PDF and share a file in Excel.